Hey folks, it's Matt Rainwater here. I am doing some drawing today. I'm drawing episode 34 of Trailer Park Warlock, and I am currently doing, uh, what would I call this? I am tightening up a rough drawing for a panel. Some context. The character I'm drawing is basically a vampire sports broadcaster. And I spent about 30 minutes on this like rough underdrawing that you see here. And I just wanna, usually I would just go straight into inks, but I wanna tighten it up a little bit because I'm, I think I would end up spending a lot of time second guessing myself if I just went straight into inking this panel. And I'd rather cut down on that time, cut down on all that, you know, control Z stuff and just like spend a little extra time on this panel, tightening it up, making sure I have everything down I'm uh, changing my methods up a little bit in regards to how I draw my pages. I used to, what I would do is, I would just pencil all my pages. And now, I would pencil all my pages and then go to inks. And now what I'm doing is I'm starting to just draw the page, ink it all at once. And I'm finding that it's giving me more, it's giving me a little bit more, I'm able to finish this part of my process a little sooner. It took me a long time to figure out what I was trying to say on that. I, uh, <laughs> I have been trying to get to this point because I'm, I want to speed up my page turnaround. I'm uh, I'm working at getting to having an episode of six to eight pages done in seven days, which means I usually work weekends. Uh, although I don't work as much on the weekends, I usually work like I don't know six hours at the most on a weekend day. And where usually on weekdays I'm working eight hours generally, six to eight hours. I veer towards six hours, um, but there are days where I work eight. So I'm probably gonna have to do, this hand just seems too simplified. I don't. I don't know, not into, not into how it looks quite yet. There's certain positions of the hand that I'm still, still getting confident with. I, I haven't, actually that looks a lot better than what I had previously. Okay. Start with that. Okay. Let's do that. All right. I am going to shift this drawing up ever so slightly. And scale it down ever so slightly. I am avoiding tangents by doing this. That's my, that's my plan. There we go. Push it up a little bit. I was feeling concerned that the bottom of this microphone was gonna touch the bottom of the panel, so I'm just moving the whole composition up a little bit. Just giving it a slight nudge. All right. Pencil in this microphone. 
and looking at it, and I think I am ready to move to inks. So now I'm gonna, mm, yeah, all right. I'm glad I did that. I saw that I hadn't gotten that line down. I'm gonna do a little bit more refinement. Let's see, does that look? Just something about the back of his neck. I, it's, maybe if I, that whole space just, that's better. I just don't. Okay, I think this is gonna work. All right, lowering the opacity on the line art, making a new layer, gonna get my brush out. I like to use textured pen in Clip Studio. It makes this nice, it's a nice line. It kind of mimics um, the kind of brush work I like to do. Like if I'm working in traditional pen and paper, brushwork, and it's got grit. It's got a little grit to it. That's what I like about it. You see all that, look at all that lovely grit, gritty, 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 grittiness. I love it. Makes me happy. All right, so we're gonna go in here. Try and keep, I'm trying to keep the line work loose and energetic because of the action taking place in the rest of the page, which I am not going to reveal to y'all because I don't like to reveal spoilers. Especially for my own stories. It's somebody else's story. If it were Game of Thrones, I wouldn't care, but it's my own story, so I'm, I'm particular in that way. Of course, Game of Thrones is over now, so I don't have to worry about that. None of us have to worry about it anymore. All right. There's a couple of little parts I'm gonna have to check after I'm done drawing this panel. And the eyes are one of them. I don't feel 100% confident that they look good. All right. I'm gonna try and round out these teeth a little bit. I feel like I oversimplified. Like, should I have a gap? Would that help? A little bit, but they're not that rendered in any of the other panels, but I don't have any other close-ups of this character that are this close up. So maybe what I could do, include a little gum line, that might help. That does help a little bit. All right. Sometimes I do that. All right. Now these bottom teeth. So I'm actually gonna go down to my other layer and I'm gonna, I'm gonna further render these teeth a little bit. Just push it. I'm gonna, hmm, there we go. Uh, I am literally 
filling my teeth with my tongue while I'm doing this to, <laughs> to uh, think about how I'm rendering my teeth or rendering this character's teeth. I guess in a sense they're, they're my teeth because that's what I'm drawing in, a, in some way. All right. I mean, could, I could look at a picture, but I mean, I have a set of teeth in my mouth, so I figured I would just use that for reference um, by way of sensation. It mostly works. I think I need to adjust this lower canine, though. I think it's not placed properly. I used to, um, I mean, for a long time when I've, when I've done cartooning, I have, um, I have used more graphic placement. By that, I mean, like, flatter. And I'm trying to incorporate more and more, like, three-dimensionality into my rendering. It brings more life and liveliness to what I'm drawing. try and use more observation from real life to punch up my characters, my environments. Draw on some, excuse me, um, drawing some long ba uh, vampire ears. Because the vampires in Trailer Park Warlock have those long, elfish, elven ears. Or maybe they're more like bat ears, perhaps. I'll leave it up to you to interpret it as you like. Having, I'm like this character in particular. I'm having a hard time with the shape of his head. I something about it. I just it's so round and there's no like breaks in that curve. Hmm. Working on it. Get that little bit of his ear in the back. All right. That's looking good. Try and capture as much as I can in a single stroke, but it doesn't always work. Also, his chest needs to be expanded out because he's actually a pretty... Like the his shape is basically it's broad. So he's like broad shouldered and tapers down like this. So his chest is actually pretty wide. Boop, little nipples. Ding. Um Yeah, that's his head. It's basically his body shape. Uh so yeah, his chest needs to be expanded a little bit. All right. Wish I knew the names of things on clothing. I need to learn more about clothing because I draw so much of it, right? Because um, I would love to know what is the name of 
these divots and collars are, are they even called collars on like formal dress? I think that's what it is. Like on this jacket, I draw it all the time on jackets, but I don't know what it's called. I don't know what purpose it's ever really supposed to serve other than like a formal aesthetic purpose. I think that's why I sometimes have a hard time with clothes are figuring out how figuring out what kind of clothes to give characters. Cuz I don't fully understand clothes on a certain level. Like personally speaking, I wear very casual plain clothes like t-shirts, shorts type of thing. Um and it's not because I don't want to wear nice clothes. I mean, I have worn nice clothes. It's happened in my life. I would wear nice clothes given the occasion. Uh, it's just like part of the way my brain works is I, there's just certain things where I'm, I like drawing them. It's fun to draw cool looking clothes on characters. Oh, sorry about that. You got this phone situation I'm sure you're hearing in the background. I'll let it pass real quick. Um, what was I saying though? So, clothes. Yeah, okay, I hear you, phone. I'm not going to do anything about you. I'm sorry. Um, so, the thing about clothes is that. Things. <laughs> uh, um, the thing about clothes is that it's easier to draw things the better you understand them, right? Like, I understand certain kinds of clothes pretty well. Clothes that I wear often. I don't wear tuxedos, so I don't fully understand. Uh, for lack of a better term, the physics of a tuxedo. Like, why does it exist? What brought it into being? I know that it is something that people wear for form, like for formal occasions, which is why I've given this character a tuxedo because I have seen a lot of uh, what, what goes to mind, especially considering the event taking place in this episode. A trailer park warlock. Um, like, maybe this is giving away too much information, but I've seen in boxing matches and professional wrestling, there's always like a master of ceremonies who wears like a tuxedo, right? Like, or something like a tuxedo as they are announcing the event and. That's what I am borrowing. That's the idea I'm borrowing from for this character. And why tuxedos? Is it to portray? Do those uh, masters of ceremony wish to convey an air of? Affluence? Is that what it's about? So in conveying affluence, I mean, that works fine with what's going on here in this episode. I'm just thinking more in terms of more broadly speaking. I mean, I guess that's it, right? Because like a lot of boxing matches take place um, sometimes in cas casinos or places where there's a lot of wealth. So I guess that's what it's about. Have I said too much? Probably not. Okay, so this, we got a tangent right here. I'm not into it. And I'm currently thinking about how I'm going to solve it. 
I can either make the line work thinner. Honestly, this arm needs to be moved out a little bit more anyway. Okay, that'll have to do. Go in and fix it. I'm gonna have to fix that microphone because it looks wonky. Like the head of the microphone looks super wonky. I might just start over. Ooh, ooh, ew, yucky. All right. I mean, the drawing of the microphone is pretty wonky too, so uh, maybe that's part of my problem. Hmm. Something I also really love about Clip Studio is being able to Turn the canvas like this whenever I want. One of my favorite things. Hold on. Hmm. You know, it didn't really work. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. I don't know. We're gonna figure this out together. This has gotta be an answer. I think we did it. All right. Yeah? Does it look all right? Does it look good? Huh? Huh? I'm going to look at this upside down. Zoom out a little bit. The microphone looks a little droopy and I don't know if I just want to go with it because it's got a cartoony look to it and that's all right. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see how it looks if I do this. Go render it further. I think if I had to be honest about myself as an artist, my weakest, my weakest area is drawing equipment, machines, tech, that kind of stuff. Things that require straight lines. I've not, I'm not great with it. I'm working on it, but I'm not a hundred percent. All right. That's better. All we can ever do is better.
what can I do to make this better? I've honestly spent too much time on this panel though. Like I've probably spent an hour on this panel and I really need to spend at most 30 minutes. But that's okay, it's my first panel of the day. I'll get faster as I'm doing more. Okay, well, I think we're done here. All right, I'm gonna save this. Oh, well, thank you as always, my dear Patreon contributors. Um, I will have more in the future. I hope y'all are all having a good day. I'm having a swell time. And I will see y'all again soon. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm actually just gonna try. I don't like it, okay. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.